So um, before I begin this, um, the patch from scratch, I just want to just give a quick visual example of what I'm doing uh, by what I mean by weaving patterns. So um, this is this patch was meant as a way to interface a floor loom with a synth and also as a way to sequence uh, audio information based on how weaving information is sequenced. So, so a loom has a set of treadles at the bottom, which a weaver controls with their feet, and those are attached in a particular way through these ropes, these tie-ups, to these harnesses that are um, hanging at the main end part of the body of the, of the floor loom. And each of these harnesses has a little heddle uh, that's what they're called. And they thread each of the individual strings that are running from top to bottom, the warp, um, to organize them in such a way that um, they store essentially individual rows of information that are accessed when the weaver puts their foot down on the particular treadle. And we can see how that's how those things are connected in a more um, schematic looking way through looking at a weaving draft. And so a, a weaving draft is kind of a 2D representation of this system, and it shows one instance of the pattern. So the top uh, matrix, which is represented by a matrix control in my patch, as are these other matrix matrices on the, on the, the right side, um, the top matrix, matrix here shows which strings are threaded through which row that's hanging from that floor loom. And then the long matrix on the right here shows which pedal or treadle that the weaver should press in the sequence running from the top to the bottom. The smaller um, matrix here shows how the treadles are connected to the heddles. Um, so that will affect what rows are being accessed at the top, which will affect how the pattern comes out. So let's get started. Just so you know, it took it takes quite a while to put this together from scratch. So most, if not all, of the footage until the end is going to be sped up significantly. So um, I'm going to try to narrate what's going on while that's happening. So I'm starting out by building my JIT.world and some matrices. And I'm going to add some controls that will determine the dimensions of our weaving pattern. So I've created those four parameters, and now I'm going to connect them to the um, ma sorry, the matrix controls. And I'm just checking that everything's right. I also have one more matrix control there on the right, which just indicates um, where we are in the sequence. Just it's a helpful thing to have. Now I'm going to create the clock. Um, there's going to be two clocks. One is a steady clock coming from a metro object, and the other one is going to be an external bang that's going to come from external sources, which we'll come to a little bit later in the patch. So that's going to be there. And now I'm just adding some functions that will tell the matrix controls which rows to access and make the uh, the step indicator work correctly. Oh, I had a bit of trouble because I forgot to indicate the length of the, the, the how many steps the counter object will go through before cycling. So now we're going to go and making the um, steps of the matrix control, the long one on the right. Um, what it does is it's 
a system in which the top corner matrix is essentially a routing matrix between the right mat matrix control and the top rows. And so what this is doing is showing us, is helping us control which columns are triggering which rows on the top. So we can have different combinations of um, one row triggering two one column on the right, triggering two rows at the top, or two columns being triggered simultaneously to trigger two rows at the top simultaneously. But there's lots of different combinations. So basically, I have that matri matrix control setting cells in a small matrix. And now what I do from here is separate that into submatrices. And I'm making eight of them total because uh, I've designed this patch to accommodate patterns that can be made on a loom that uses up to eight um, treadles, which are the floor pedals that um, most floor looms have. Um, later on, what we'll do is we'll slice down the lists that we get from these matrix these sub matrices with the JIT dot spill object so that we only use as many um, lists as we need. So for all the ones I'm going to show here, we're just going to use four um, because we're not going to use patterns that use more than a sequence that's more than four treadles wide or four rows deep at the top. Um, this is me troubleshooting um, why it's not organizing, splitting up my submatrices correctly. And what I learned is that I accidentally patched one submatrix to the other one. I also have an invert object or a dim map on the, the main matrix that's taking the information from the matrix control because it accommodates different kinds of weaving pattern drafts that can be inverted depending on who's designing them. And save it. And I think I'm almost at the end of my troubleshooting. There we go. Great. So we're going to move ahead. Now we're going to take those rows that were um, split up from the main matrix and combine them with a sequence um, so basically I'm taking the matrix that's created by the routing matrix at the top right the small square one and these rows or I'm sorry these columns are going to be triggered according to what the pattern is on the long matrix control below it so that's what this current sub object in the patch is doing so basically what I do is I have an object that unpacks the steps being triggered from the, the long matrix control to the bottom right. And then it's telling what lists to send to combine into one main list to send to the top row. So I'm using two ZL reg um, list storing objects, which will be either written, where the top one holds the list coming out of the top right matrix control object. And then the bottom one is either written with zeros or with the, the columns that are being triggered. And those are combined using a VEX per object. So I'm here I am testing out to make sure that it's triggering objects and we should see a list being triggered by that um, in the message box on the bottom right of the sub patch. There we go. And we're going to send that out. And the nice thing about this is actually we can use the same sub patches here to uh, get information from the top row, the top matrix control. We just need to change some of the parameters on what um, the dimensions of the incoming matrices are. So instead of splitting up the top matrix control into different columns, what we're doing is splitting it up into different rows in the same way that um, the rows of heddles on a loom are split up. 
into different harnesses that hang. And I'm troubleshooting the same thing here, just making sure that each of those submatrices should indicate one row of data being turned on and off on the matrix control object at the top. And now we're going to put those together using a similar setup that we did for the right matrix control, where whichever rows are being triggered, they should be combined into one long matrix, which will be written, uh, one long list, sorry, that will be written to the matrix to create the weaving pattern um, visually for us. And what I'm doing essentially is putting together all of the triggered lists of each row that are being triggered by the top matrix control and multiplying them by a number so that they have a high enough value to be shown in a char matrix in max. And we can see that it's working there. So we're going to test this object out. It looks like we didn't set the dim, the dim correctly. And then we just need to have an ops, put an offset on the jit.fill object so it writes the matrix in row by row. Um, what I'm finding out right now is that this patch so far does not work under Max with OpenGL3 or GL3. It actually works with GL2, so what I'm going to actually, you're going to see me do is switch it to GL2 eventually, and then close and reopen the program. Or I'm writing these lists to a matrix, which is sent to a, a video plane, because it handles the graphics much faster than using a straight-up matrix with a window. Now it works. And the pattern's a little bit chaotic because I didn't use anything that has an order, order or symmetry to it. So now we're going to create a second matrix uh, that's going to be um, blended with the first weaving draft, which shows us what step of the weaving pattern we're accessing at a given moment. And in doing so, we're also going to create a system of basically how it accesses an individual step of this overall pattern. Um, so I'm again using a sub matrix of the main weaving pattern and telling Max to look for um, a certain nth term of each list that's coming in as a row. And now what I'm doing is I'm using the scalar max patch that came with max by default as an easy way of um, generating notes to send out to MIDI um, based on the brightness value of the pattern. But we can also drive notes in other ways. It's just the one I've used so, so, so the most so far. Now I'm creating a curve, uh, basically a way of advancing through each list of the pattern, I mean each row of the pattern, by using a curve object, which gives a really nice um, organic movement through each row. I like this because it, it sort of emulates the way that uh, Weaver tosses a shuttle across the, the vertical running strings to run the horizontal strings through the weaving to create the pattern. I'm also creating an, an option to advance through each step of each row um, more regularly by basically creating a, a clock divider that divides from the main clock that's running down through the weaving patch. Now I'm creating the um, matrix that will show us which um, step of the weaving pattern we're on.
can see that in the little green cell there. And that'll be blended on the second video plane. Here we go. Now we have our main weaving patch, and now we have a second matrix, which is running through that patch and helping us, us to access different parts of the weaving pattern. So now the last part of this patch, as it had been submitted, excuse me, was um, a couple of things. One, a way of processing incoming audio, and two, um, a way to record audio that's being generated by the patch and then rereading it according to how we're accessing um, the pattern. So in weaving, you have warp running top to bottom and weft running uh, right to left. So I have one sub patch that's going to access a buffer using the groove object, um, essentially from top to bottom. So that's the warp buffer. So instead of reading the the buffer linearly, it jumps down a it jumps steps according to what step of the pattern it's on. Right now I'm using um, also using trunk objects to sort of give some rand like some controlled randomness to the length, the amount of buffer being read, uh, read by the groove object. So this is basically these sub patches here that I'm writing are meant to be uh, ways that we use that I'm using the um, the step of the pattern that we're accessing as a to generate a start point for reading the, the buffer that's being recorded and use an end buffer and define an end point to that um to reading that buffer it's doing so by um using the number of steps that are in the overall weaving pattern as a unit of measurement um, of time, essentially. And so they're, they're somewhat similar. Uh, the, for the buffer, I mean, the uh, groove object reading the, the buffer of the warp versus the weft. So again, reading the buffer that's referencing the strings going top to bottom and the strings going left to right. Um, but they're just accessing the recordings that are coming in to the computer slightly differently, mostly in how they're um, processing the, the X and Y coordinates of the step of the sequence we're on. That's right. So my three and fours, those are going to be coming in from the synthesizer. And then the one and twos are options to put a connect like other microphones, like a a uh, a contact mic and such to control parameters. What I'm doing right now is creating an envelope follower um, slash um, threshold detector to derive um, some control information from incoming audio. And I have the patch that I submitted had two of the same object. So 
So it's running um, audio that was coming into my um, computer just through my laptop microphone as I was making this patch. And um, I just find it easy with the new MC objects to easily mix down several sources at once uh, in a way that gives them some nice space with the panning. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. It just gets quick results. So the last thing I did here is um, just create um, a channel of MIDI to send out to the MIDI to CV converter that can control the synth parameters according to some of the audio input. And um, I'm just using a, uh, because the MIDI to CV has a 14-bit digital audio converter, it gives a lot more information um, than the standard 0 to 127. MIDI um, output. So now um, I'm showing the patch. Uh, right now it's hooked up to um, the synth, and you can just see it's just sending out MIDI information according to the, the brightness of the uh, cells in the matrix um, and it's all one brightness so it's all one note value you can hear the pitch of the synth get higher there because i pulled the uh, cv out for the, the frequency in the synth um, just to give you a reference of how it's affecting the pitch um, what it's doing is it's scaling the, uh, the brightness of the matrix to a scale value using the scalar patch from Max. And now I'm using it just to control an external sequencer on the modular so you can hear something that's a little bit more melodic. So now I'm going to try using the parameters within Max or creating some new parameters essentially to um, vary the notes that are being outputted from the pattern itself using the weaving generator. And to do that, instead of having one brightness value being written to the matrix, it's going to write random values to the matrix. So right now it'll make some of those cells darker. You might have heard a little bit of a squelch in the audio because I have a contact mic hooked up to that envelope follower and it's controlling the... Uh... So I have these notes being outputted from the weaving pattern going out of the note out object of the um, in the scalar patch and the uh, I modified some of the way it processes the notes coming in because I wanted to make sure it, that way it stays synced so each time we're reading it's synced so the audio matches up with the cells being read in the matrix Some of that isn't as varied, so um, something else I do is multiply each of the lists according to their the index of the row. So list one is multiplied by one, two, and three, and four, and such that um, it varies the values that are being multiplied before they're sent out to the weaving matrix. And so, I already hear some more variation because each row has its own defined 
um, list value. Now this patch might not have as much note variation because um, it doesn't have a lot of um, rows being triggered two at a time, and, or it doesn't, and it has a very linear pattern of up and down. So there's a lot of order to it, and it's really just one row being triggered once at a time. So even if I'm multiplying those rows by different values before I scale them up with the random object, um, they're still only going to be triggered one at a time. Um, and I might fast forward a bit now so that we can get to the other parts of the patch. So there's a couple of other ways of moving the sequence along. So the one thing I'm going to do here is use that external bang to use the contact mic to trigger, you can hear the contact mic, to trigger the sequence to go to the next step. Right now you can hear when I press on it or move my finger on it, it, it changes the amount of wave folding um, that's being applied to the oscillator. Um, but now I'm going to connect it to our other envelope follower object um, to get a bang to send out. So I'm not going to touch it, but when I do, you can see it jumps because it's pretty sensitive down the rows. So that's my finger advancing through the sequence now. It can get kind of chaotic, but that's why we have that. We have a little bit of control over the threshold to make sure that it doesn't get too wild in the sequencing. The other thing I'm going to do here is use an external um, push button sensor to send a MIDI, a MIDI note back into Max. And this sensor I can connect up to the loom so that the, there's a very precise advancement through the weaving patch, um, just using that push button. And it's just triggering a note that'll have a velocity of 127. And this makes for a really great way to sync up the loom and the synth. So now I'm just clicking through on this push button. And you can see it's not regular, but I have much more control over it. And I just cut ahead to uh, me. I just turned up the buffers. So you can sort of hear a bit of how it's reading through the audio being recorded from the modular. see that it's triggered to not record unless the envelope is still active that's going through the patch. So that is the fundamental um, part of the patch that I submitted. Um, I'm still looking at um, making improvements on it, but on, all in all, I found it as a really useful way of thinking about how to interface two, these two instruments, the loom and the synthesizer, in an interesting way, and also derive an interesting way of sequencing and getting information out of weaving patterns. Thanks so much.